In this video, we're gonna talk about the things you need to stop thinking to be wealthy. Cue the intro. It goes without saying that you need to be thinking the right way to be wealthy. So here we've outlined six things that you need to stop thinking to get to that point. Number one, that you are the victim. Being a victim in something and conducting yourself as a victim are two separate things. Like some people can be in a situation where, you know, they are totally getting the raw end of the deal and they are not in a position to fight that. But how they think and how they feel about it, they can control and they can flip those situations on their head just by thinking the right thing and having the right frame of mind. I mean, I've seen it, you know, there's a power in being positive and being strong and steadfast in what you're doing, even when people are trying to make you feel a certain way about what you're doing. You know, all you have to do sometimes is control your emotions about what is actually happening and it will allow you to have that space to get on the other side of whatever is happening so that you can make a better decision. And that's really what it comes down to. Being the victim makes you make bad decisions. You know, when you are the victim, you're never thinking about the prosperity of the moment. You're never thinking about the thing that you can do to change. You're always thinking about what someone else is doing to you. And that is a really dangerous place to be in terms of trying to build wealth, in terms of trying to be financially free, even with your health and everything. It's a dangerous place to be because you never really get to the point of being able to see yourself to the other side of the good things that are gonna happen to you. Things are just happening to you because you are in the victim state. So to get out of that, definitely take a moment sometimes, even if you are feeling like things are not going your way, take a moment sometimes and really think, you know what, let me figure out a way to change this. Let me figure out what I need to do different to be out of the situation. Um, I say that because our words have power. Our words are so powerful. And if you constantly tell yourself, oh, I can't do this, or I'm trying to do this, but something is in my way. If you're constantly putting those verbal obstacles in your way, it's very hard to get to the next point where you are actually making strides in what you're doing. So stop putting those verbal obstacles in your way, even if you are in a situation where you are being victimized, you know, because we all are victims sometimes. You know, the things that are being pushed on us and bombarding us constantly, we are victims to those things. But how you react to that and how you, you know, conduct yourself in that is really what determines how you're going to fare on the other side of that. So stop calling yourself the victim. Stop being the victim and don't let yourself be the victim. Number two, that you have to work hard for money. Now, this is a huge one. and I know we've talked about this before, but it really comes down to the understanding of value and time. And a lot of times, you know, we just don't have that understanding because we're not taught that. You know, most people are taught the traditional way of you have to work hard for every dollar. You have to, you know, go to school, get a good education, get a good job and work hard for your money. And once you're taught that, it puts you in a situation where you can't really prosper beyond that point. You're always chasing the money that you're getting and you're always chasing lifestyles. You're always chasing the notion of, I have to keep up with what I'm doing and I have to work harder to get what, what I want. And that really is a situation, it's a dead end situation. So to get to a point of building wealth, you have to understand that it's not always about working hard. And, you know, I know many people have heard the um, saying, work smart, not hard. And it's true. If you can work smart, a lot of times you will uh, get in a situation where you are making more doing less than you ever can make doing more. But I know it's not easy and I know it doesn't happen overnight, but really internalize that and work towards your understanding of that. Not saying that it won't get you to the point of being able to make more money because sometimes working hard does get you to the point of making more money, but it's not scalable. That's the problem, you know, it's not scalable. There's only so many hours in the day. There's only so much time you can give in terms of work to something before you burn out, before you're tired. You have to place value on what you're doing and value your time and be able to put that in perspective as much as you can. And that will lead you to the place that you need to be in terms of building wealth. Number three, that being wealthy makes you a bad person. 
Now, this is something that we're all sold <laughs> from birth and that we learn and we absorb and we take this with us throughout a lot of situations. You know, we see it in the media, we hear it from our parents, we hear it from everybody. You know, if we are growing up in situations that are not well situations, we hear this so much that being wealthy makes you an evil, bad person. And that is just a mechanism to keep you from being wealthy. You know, if you really believe that and you start to internalize that, you're never going to prosper to the point of having true wealth. And you're never going to be a believer that you can even be in that situation because deep down you have this core disdain for the wealthy and the core disdain for what it takes to be wealthy. And you really don't even understand what it takes. So I know this is a hard pill to swallow. And it was hard for me to really get to that point of understanding that. But once you understand it, you really see how those things are playing out in our society and why you have a 1% and a 99% and all of those things in between. You really start to see why those things are occurring because it is a mind frame. It is, you know, a conditioning of the mind. And not to say that there aren't any bad people who are wealthy and not to say that there aren't any bad people who are poor. And you have to understand that. I think the narrative that we're taught and that we keep getting pushed on us is that, you know, wealthy people are bad and poor people are, you know, just the victims. Number four, that you have to look rich to be wealthy. Now, this is something I know a lot of people are touchy-feely about, but I'm going to say it anyway. A lot of times people are trying to look rich but they're not building wealth. And that is one of the things that will really keep you from being wealthy and having a wealthy mindset, especially if you don't have financial means to sustain that, it really takes money away from you and takes wealth away from you and doesn't really add or contribute to your wealth in any way. Now, there are situations to the contrary where you are building a brand or someone has built a brand around looking a certain way and you know those things do play into building wealth. But I think the problem is the mindset more so than and the actual practice of what's happening because I don't think people do it for that reason a lot of times. People don't have that notion of, you know, I have to look this way because it's going to allow me to be in these situations and then, you know, connect these dots. But on the back end, I'm using this money that I'm making in these situations to build wealth and I really have a real understanding of that. So make sure that if you are doing that, that that is your understanding and you don't have to get caught up in looking rich and not being wealthy. Number five, that more money will fix all of your problems. Now, this is something that I know a lot of people truly do believe when they are in a situation where they may not have enough money to, you know, meet their bills and all those things. And in those instances, money will fix those problems. If you need a thousand dollars for a specific bill and you had that thousand dollars, that would fix that problem. But what it won't fix is the mindset that is contributing to needing that money or you know not being able to make that bill in the first place you have to understand that the problems we have sometimes stem from other things and that's what I think people don't really understand or equate with the problems we just toil in I have to find a solution for the immediate need but we're not fixing the root problems. So that's one of the main things. If you really develop an understanding of why you're having the root problems that you're having. And I know a lot of people may feel upside down about this and be bent out of shape about this because it is one of those conversations that a lot of people don't want to have because they feel like, oh, no, nah, you're just trying to make me feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But that's not what it is at all. Sometimes there are problems inherent that are deep down from the ways that you have learned about money to your habits and the things that you do habitually every day. You have to understand that if you can fix those things sometimes, those are the things that will lead you to an abundance mindset, which will in turn lead you to wealth. And number six, that wealth is out of your reach. Now, this stems from what we were just talking about, kind of the mindset of, you know, what you've learned growing up. And a lot of times people believe that wealth is out of their reach. That is something they will never be able to attain. And when you have that core belief system about yourself, it's very difficult to move in a place of understanding abundance and understanding how you can make yourself into something else or make the situation that you're in turn into something else. So really do you know understand that it's not something that you're going through alone. A lot of people have that thought process and that's one of the main things that keeps us, you know, in a poor state. You know, believing that 
in our core, believing that, you know, I could never be rich. Even if you are saying to yourself, I want to be this or I want to be that, when you have a core belief system that that is out of your reach, that you can't get to that point because it's out of your reach, then you're going to always be caught up in that situation of chasing that and trying to get to a point where you can maybe touch a glimpse of that or see a glimpse of that. So the alternative to that and the solution to that is to understand that everything is within reach. There's nothing that you can see or do that is not within your reach. You are capable of all things. You have the power to command those things in your life and get those things done. I want you to believe that right now because it is possible. And I know it's possible for you. I hope this has been extremely helpful for someone. And until we talk again, I wish you health, wealth, and freedom.